I'm trying to contact Charles Wade. You know the industrialist? Wow, really? Why? It's complicated, but he knew Grandpa back in the day. They went to war together. Huh. Must be super hard to get in touch with a person like that. Wade residence? Hi, this is Kathy Rain. I'm calling for Charles Wade. He doesn't live here anymore. What's this about? What do you want with my father? I'd just like to have a quick word with Mr. Wade. It's about my grandfather, Joseph Rain. You're 20 years late, girl. My father has neither time nor energy to deal with you people. But... This conversation is over. Unless my father explicitly says he wants to talk to you, it's not going to happen. Do you know the Myers family? Supposed to live somewhere near the lake? Aren't they the ones whose daughter drowned a long time ago? Yeah, that's right. When Lily was 10, she started drawing, always doodling on just about anything she could get her hands on. Eventually, her art teacher at school helped her to get started with oil painting. When Lily was 15, something changed. At first, I thought it was just usual teen angst, but no, this was something different. She started going out, disappearing for long periods of time. She locked herself in when painting. She never used to do that. I tried everything. Counseling, support groups, antidepressants. Nothing worked. About a year later, she just gave up. And, well, you know the rest. That shape has to be significant somehow. Wow, the church logo looks pretty similar to the smoky lights. I might have to visit them after all. Hello, dear viewers, and welcome back to part three of Kathy Rain here on Saving Often. David and I are hacking computers and getting answers to the mysteries. Yeah, we got into the mainframe. Um, we've uh, taken the blue pill in the matrix and we enhanced a photo. We found out that God is aliens um, and uh, we're going to work on uh, modulating some recordings so we can impersonate a billionaire. Yeah, so our next task, uh, according to Kathy herself, is to figure out a way to get uh, get the attention of uh, of the billionaires. What is she, his daughter, Erica? Yeah. Erica Wade. Erica she doesn't Wade. like us. We uh we popped in that overexposed photo that we found all the way back in part one and used some uh some MacGuffins on the computer to uh enhance the photo and we found a um, picture of the strange smoky lights. Strange smoky lights taken somewhere in Conwell Woods. Ugh, I feel strange just looking at them. And a red flower. It's a bright red flower of some kind. Could be a long shot, but I've never seen a flower like that. Maybe finding out more about where it grows could narrow down where the picture was taken. I was hoping that we'd be able to, you know, look at these things. But uh, I guess all that we're going to get is Kathy's description. It's a bright red flower. Could be a long... Anyway. Uh, if, the if this is going to take any inspiration from Silent Hill, that red flower is going to be like a uh, hallucinogenic um, like drug component or something like that. Something mm. the cult could use. That's very possible. Um, our buddy here, Eileen, is working on doing some research into the three lights, uh, which are curiously the same as the icon for the Church of the Holy Trinity. The church logo does look very similar to the smoky lights. Good thing I have the address right here. And hey, that's our reason for going to the church. Yeah, finally, that loose end. So I think that we've pretty much What about the up. voice recording? Well, yeah, but do we know what we're even doing with it yet? I guess we can play well, with the software. Yeah, we like we Kathy mentioned before that like we could try to uh, fool Erica. The question is like, how do we get the interface? Like we need to get a, a audio recording here. So we have to use Mr. Dicto um, in some fashion here. And we've got the two tapes, so Nah, I doubt I need to mess with this tape. Uh, try the other tape. Yeah. 
Gotta rewind. Gotta rewind. Please be kind, rewind. You've the rain, residents. Leave a message after the beep. The only one I trust now. Just call me back as soon as you can. Rick, are you excited to do some editing uh, even during the episode itself? <laughs> <laughs> Can I not listen to it? All right, fine. Okay, Erica Wade. Let's see if we can't motivate you to hear me out. Found five distinct voices separated into sections. Joseph, Mrs. Rain, it's me, Charles. I thought I'd give you a call. Erica just had her firstborn. It's a boy. Thankfully, he looks nothing like his father. Uh, listen, I was thinking maybe you'd like to come and visit. And what about your little Kathy? Maybe she wants to see the baby. Well, anyways, I hope to see you soon. All the best. Bye. Well, we have all the components here, but what the hell could we possibly want to say? Hmm. This is an awful lot of words. And we got to do them individually. Uh, probably like, it's me, your father, or something like that. It's me, Charles. <laughs> I get results. <laughs> uh, I should probably greet my intended. Hello, Joseph. Mrs. Oh, you're not going to let me listen to it? Erica, it's me, <laughs> Charles, your father. <laughs> your father. I should probably ask Erica to do something specific for Kathy Rain. Well, I think that uh, she seems to have at least moved on to the next component. <laughs> I can't wait for like this to be voiced and it's just like, there, it's me, Charles, your father. I. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Rain wants... <laughs> Um, wants to visit. <laughs> I don't think I need to mention visits just yet. Making Erica agree to have a civil conversation should be enough for now. Yeah, their name wants to. Um, Kathy Rain wants to see. Um. Kathy Rain, Kathy Rain looks, um... Wants to see me. <laughs> I should probably ask... Okay, ask Eric to do something specific for Kathy Rain. Anyways. Call Kathy Rain. Almost. Just a few more tweaks. She wants to visit. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> hey, we're not done. <laughs> Oh, okay. Okay. I'm, I'm, uh, they, better, they better wow me with this tech. I'll just reuse the same tape and place the modified message at the end. Hello, Erica. It's your father. Call Kathy Rain and give her what she wants. Bye. The <laughs> <laughs> right, message should now be at the end of the original tape. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> All right, that was goofy as hell, but it was kind of fun. <laughs> Can we show uh, Eileen the red uh, flower? We real probably quick? should. What do you think about this flower? It's beautiful. What kind of flower is it? No idea. That's what I'm trying to find out. I got a botany book around here somewhere. I could look it up later. Sure, that would be grady, thanks. Anytime. All right, well, that helps. And we've already showed Good her point. this. I showed Yeah. 
All right, well. <laughs> You've reached Erica Wade. Leave a message after the beep. Hello, Erica. It's your father. Call Kathy Rain and give her what she wants. Bye. <laughs> You've reached Erica just... Wade. Leave a message after the beep. Hi, Erica. This is Kathy Rain. I spoke to your father. He asked me to get in touch with you and said he would call ahead. You can reach me at 555-8352. Bye. Your move, Erica. Now that's some out of the box thinking. Yep, just might be silly enough to work. Well, time for a break. Gotta eat something before I pass out. Okie dokie, I'll stay here and keep digging. All right, see you in a bit. Hey! So, any progress with the search? Yeah, I was able to identify that flower. It's called the Red Scythe, or Rosea falcus. I discovered that there was a small nature reserve near Conwell Springs, which was established in 89. The Red Scythe is on their list of endangered plants. I made Let me a guess, Conwell a Nature Preserve. <laughs> That's something. I should go check it out. Maybe I can narrow down the place where that picture was taken. My thoughts exactly. Here you go. The nature reserve is marked out on this map. Jeez, you've been busy. Well, you know, beats homework. Eh, amen to that. And, uh, good work, Eileen. Happy to help. So what? Oh, hang on. I'll go get that. Okie dokie. Hello? This is Erica Wade calling for Kathy Rain. Speaking. Miss Rain, uh, this is terribly awkward. I realize now how rude I was before. I wanted to apologize and ask if there is anything I can do. <laughs> Will be nice. Apology <laughs> accepted. You can start by answering a few questions. Very well. Hmm. Well? Do you know anything about what happened to my grandfather that night in 81? Not really, no. But what I do know is how it destroyed father. It did? Oh, yes. The two of them were great friends once. And when Joseph was hurt, they hadn't been talking for some time. Father always hoped they would be able to reconnect one day. He kept putting it off, believing they had time. But in the end, it never happened. So, what were things like? back when they were still good friends. Oh, they were like peas in a pod. <laughs> Always sharing their war stories and, and laughing together. Oh, ho, ho, war. <laughs> way, Joseph became the uncle I never had. He was around a lot when father went out on business trips. Later on, I, I even met you a few times when you were just a baby. I don't remember any of that. Oh, no matter. You were so little then. Erica, I have to ask. Why were you so defensive on the phone earlier when I tried to reach out? Oh, I don't know, Kathy. Our families haven't been in touch for a long time. I don't remember exactly when it happened, but we all started drifting apart. My guess is that it had to do with father's growing wealth. Friendship needs common ground, and we started living in different worlds. What happened to your grandfather was the final nail in the coffin. Father just couldn't bear seeing him like that. Neither alive nor dead. What do you know about Lily Myers? She was a young artist who lived somewhere in Conwell Springs. Killed herself, if I recall correctly. Dreadful thing. But other than that, not much. We never knew the family. It wasn't our fault. <laughs> do you recognize Good old Uncle the Cocky. Cocky? 
<laughs> it may be an Air Force call sign. I can't say that I do. Father had many friends in the Air Force, but no one I can recall by that name. What can you tell me about Mr. Wade? My father is a great man. He has so many ideas, so much left to realize, which makes it hurt so much more to see him like this. Like what? See him like what? The illness and everything, of course. Right. Yeah, it must be hard. Oh, yes, indeed. I wish he wouldn't be so stubborn with his treatment. He could go to any state-of-the-art hospital, but insists on being treated in that backwater clinic in Conwell Springs. The community clinic in the middle of town? Yes. It's like he's given up and is just waiting for the inevitable to happen. Ah, uh, yes, the Conwell Clinic. <laughs> what do you know about Lily Meyer's art? Oh, that little girl had a twisted mind, let me tell you that. Oh, my father used to have a few pieces of hers in his collection. Horrible things. Where are they now? I couldn't understand why he ever decided to procure them in the first place. You say, used to have. Did he get rid of the paintings? Oh, either that or... Oh, he put them in storage somewhere. I haven't seen them for years. I never bothered to ask him why. Glad to be rid of them, quite frankly. Could he be the art collector? I think that was what we inferred when we spoke to um, Lily's mother uh, last episode, so I'm pretty confident he is. Do you know anything about the Church of the Holy Trinity? It's the one and only church in Conwell Springs. I was baptized there, and I married my husband there. Anything out of the ordinary about them? Oh, not really. Uh, they seem like a typical church to me. Though they were aliens. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought that was a little odd. <laughs> okay, that's all I needed. Very well. Feel free to call back if you have any more questions. All right. Wade is in Conwell Springs. He's being treated in the clinic. Very good. Where are the paintings, Wade? That was Erica Wade. Her father is being treated at the clinic in Conwell Springs. Being treated? He's sick? Looks that way. Small miracle they managed to keep it out of the press. Yeah, I suppose you're returning to talk to him? It'll have to be tomorrow. It's quite late for that now. I suppose. Scrabble? Oh, you're so on. I will crush you. Finally, their friendship is blossoming. <laughs> You're off your game today. Is everything all right? Oh, shut up. I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. Oh, up late, thinking about your grandpa and everything? Not just that, I keep having this bad dream. Well, it's not exactly a dream, it's something that actually happened. Oh? What is it? I'm not sure I should tell you. You can trust me. Whatever it is, I promise I won't judge. Well, it's your funeral. So, uh, I used to be 16 and also pregnant. <laughs> oh no, I broke it. Um, please go on. Well, seeing as how I don't actually have a five-year-old, you can probably put two and two together. You had an abortion? Sure did. Major pain in the ass too, but hey, couldn't let that pregnancy go untreated. <sighs> I'm glad you're telling me, but I really wish you hadn't done that, Kathy. Who was the, um... You know, the... The donor, you wouldn't know him. Guy who knocked me up, single motherhood waiting to happen. I don't actually know his name, could probably pick out his Johnson in a lineup, though. Maybe it was cocky. <laughs> Guy who knocked me up, single motherhood waiting to happen. Back then, I couldn't cook anything but microwave food, and I'd retch if I so much as walked past one trash can with smelly diapers in it. That kid would have been raised by my mother. I'd rather die than put another child through that. I respect your decision, but you know how I feel about this. That guy up there, he's pro-life. And I'm with him. 
I get that. I gotta say, you're being really cool about this, E. I was expecting you to clutch your cross, flip the table, and storm off or something. I'm not a walking stereotype, you know. Says the red-headed nerd with the glasses. Ha ha. But Kathy, if you keep having that nightmare, perhaps you should talk to somebody about it. Maybe. But I doubt obsessing over it is very healthy either. Your turn, E. Oh, fine. Hmm. Salvation, triple word score. Oh, <laughs> I play apricot, orange. Yay, bingo. 67 points. Well, ain't that fucking peachy. At least it's not sour grapes. <laughs> Touche. A tainted one approaches. Is it time? Ah, oh, we got Cthulhu's. <laughs> yes. A fire that burns so bright. It is almost unbearable to see. Indeed. It seems the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Shall we sculpt some flesh friends then? Very well. I will attend to the threshold. Spooky. Good morning, sunshine. Please tell me I dreamt all those Scrabble losses last night. Three times in a row. Rub it in, why don't you? I'll just go strangle myself now. Humiliating. Oh, you. Don't be a sore loser. So what's the plan today? Mr. Wade is the plan. I'll head for the clinic right away. While I'm at it, I'm going to check out the church and the nature reserve. Okie dokie. What can I do to help? Why don't you continue looking into the lights? I have a feeling they're the key to solving all of this. You could also look up the history of Conwell Springs in general, see if anything unusual has been going on. I'll get right on it. Great. Thanks, E. Oh, by the way, don't forget to check out the page I gave you about the red scythe. It's a pretty interesting flower. Right. Yeah. All right. Let's check out that page. It's a photocopy of a book page with information about the red scythe flower. Here's an interesting segment. Another interesting trait of the red scythe is the smell, which is familiar to that of a pepper. The pollen of the plant has also been known to cause hallucinations in concentrated amounts. Native American tribes harvested and smoked the plant for that reason, but the flower never caught on as a modern recreational drug due to the difficulty of growing it. <laughs> Conwell Lake, Conwell Woods, Conwell Springs, Nature Reserve, McConnell Air Force Base. Conwell Woods. What were you doing out there, Grandpa? A prominent clifftop near the highway. Likely the most popular tourist spot in the area. Route Why would they call it Parowan Peak? There's not even a single con in the word. <laughs> it's the nature reserve, where the smoky lights were photographed. That looks like the town area itself. Conwell Lake, where Lily Myers met her demise. One of the oldest Air Force bases in the U.S. Grandpa was stationed there during the war. But what about this coffee stain size impact crater? <laughs> what does it mean? <laughs> okay. Well, we have a wealth of places to go. 
Hey, E, got a sec? Sure thing, Kathy. What's up? Any ideas about what happened to my grandfather in 81? Beats me. Maybe he found what he was looking Did you just quote a t- Maybe. I think we've heard that. I wonder what was so special about Lily Myers. Well, besides her being a talented artist who drowned herself in a lake. I bet there's some secret about her art. Let's hope Charles Wade has some answers. What do you think of this cocky person? Well, uh, the nickname makes me think of, uh, you know, <laughs> boy parts. <laughs> and you call yourself a Christian. So, what's your take on this Charles Wade? I'm not sure. He sounded like a super nice guy on that tape, but media says that he's a ruthless businessman. The tape is over two decades old. Maybe he's changed. Either that or he is very different in his private life. Hard to know without actually seeing him. What do you think of Lily Meyer's art? I actually looked her up this morning, and I couldn't find any records of her being recognized as an artist. <laughs> a fake artist. Yeah. I doubt there was ever a chance for that to happen. Wade bought everything shortly after she died. I only got a chance to see this one picture. It wasn't all that bad, but nothing breathtaking. Well, maybe there's more to her art than meets the eye. Something Wade knew, and we're missing. Yeah, maybe. You say you're an artist, huh? Name five colors. <laughs> What's your opinion on the Church of the Holy Trinity? They seem like an okay bunch to me. Just your regular old Christians. My kind of crowd. That's just it. They seem a bit too normal. And there's that logo, too. It could just be a coincidence, Kathy. The Holy Trinity is typically portrayed as a triangle. I don't believe in coincidences, E. I believe in action and reaction. And results. Gee, <laughs> you sound like a starship captain. Captain Rain of the USS Dignity. Here to save the galaxy. Oh, please kill me now. So what am I supposed to do with this? I don't know. I thought it might help you find the place where that picture was taken. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. I don't need to show her that. All right. Well, I, I think that's everything relevant. Okay, okay. Hit the bricks. All right, I'm off. Peace out, E. Okay, okay. Good luck, and see you later. Oh, man. Beautiful. So we've got the church, the reserve, and the clinic. Where would you like to go first? I feel like the nature preserve is probably going to be less dependent on the other locations, so it'll probably be the best place to gather information. There's what? the flower. <laughs> There's the right flower. there. <laughs> first thing we see. <laughs> well, time to smoke well, it, I this guess. Is it. This is where the picture was taken. I'm not sure what I expected to find here. Free shovel. <laughs> I need to clear my head. Uh oh. What the? Why, hello there. You have laid eyes on this dapper fellow once before, haven't you? Nope. Just. No, I'd remember a creepy bald dude with makeup. I doubt it. You look like you just escaped from a circus. That's not really my kind of gig. I don't think so, Mr. Clean, unless seeing your face on a bottle of detergent counts. Man, so many sass options. I don't think so, Mr. Clean, unless seeing your face on a bottle of detergent counts. <laughs> Always the joker, aren't you, Kathy? Who are you? How do you know my name? It is my calling to know people like you. Those shackled by their past, yet yearning for change. I feel... strange. Am I dreaming? It's the mending. I will try to facilitate. You're not real. 
I am lying asleep in my bed right now. Focus, Kathy. Listen to the drowned girl. You mean Lily? What about her? She's the one who slipped away, filled with secrets. While she may be free in death, her cold, wet hands still trap many in painful ignorance. What is this, Woodstock Poetry Slam? Mind speaking like a normal person? <laughs> I knew you wouldn't disappoint! I'm glad, given how much trouble I went through to be here. You see, my name was taken from me, so I claimed a color in its stead. The next time we meet, you'll know the exact hue of red. You're on the right path, Kathy. Follow your grandfather, and everything will work out in the end. Wait, what? How did I get here? We didn't get the shovel! Am I going crazy? Am I turning into mom? Like, well, I'm here, might as well talk to Gran. Oh, hello, dear. Glad to see you again so soon. Hi, Grandma. I just thought I'd drop by. Sure, hon. Stay as long as you'd like. There are a few things I need to ask you, Grandma. Very well, dear. I don't see a reason to ask her about that. Uh, ask her about the plant. Ask her about the photo. Do you know photo. anything about this flower, Grandma? I can't say that I do. I remember seeing it growing in the woods, but I didn't think much of it at the time. What do you see in this picture, Grandma? I have no idea, but it's quite an eerie display. What is it? I'm trying to figure that out. I found the picture hidden in the attic. Oh? Come to think of it, the trees do look similar to the ones in Conwell Woods. Yeah, it was taken somewhere in that area. I found out that the flower in the picture matches a rare local species. Aren't you clever? Do let me know if you come across anything else. I don't want to show her that. <laughs> Would you like some pirated software? <laughs> I don't want to show her that. Okay, That's well. That's about it. See you That's later, everything. Gramps. Take care, dear. Good visit. Good talk. Expensive looking scotch. Just one more visit to the attic for the road. I mean, there's got to be a reason the game dropped us here, right? I mean, it's probably just to be kind of cryptic and mysterious, like, you know, like, ooh, the Red Lodge exists, uh, and now you're grand. <laughs> nah, nothing. Yeah, I guess so. I don't suppose there's anything I can look up in the phone book for now. No result for that. Nah, nothing like that in here. This doesn't work anything like Google. <laughs> Cute red horse. It's some old Swedish thing, I think. This paint looks fresh. Grandma must have had this restored recently. Cute red horse, this paint. Hmm. That, that just stands out to me, especially given the red motif of the Scarlet Man. Mm hmm Well, we can try going back and then, you know, have the exact same exchange where we get teleported to Grandma's. Hello? Ooh. Artwork. Creepy bald guy. 
Guess no one's home. That wasn't here before. Probably look, might be Nathan's work. The Red Man. Red Man. A bald man dressed in red. Oh, creepy. Before I mess with that flower, I need this shovel. Hey, is this shovel taken? Good enough for me. Finally, we're set for vehicle combat. <laughs> Handy little shovel. I can dig it. Get it? I'm not sure what I'd want to dig up there. But are you joking me? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a specimen of the red scythe. It's endangered. I'm not going to take it without a really good reason. Well, I guess we're going to have to do additional research and then drive all the way back here, yeah. even though we both know. Everyone here knows we're going to get it eventually. <laughs> uh, let's go check out the clinic. Oh, it's the bum. We meet again, Mr. Homeless Guy. Homeless? That's the worst thing I ever heard of, and totally untrue. So, what's up with the trash can? Digging for treasure? Well, uh, I'm just going through a rough patch. By the way, you owe me ten bucks. Nah, you agreed to seven. You're busting my balls here. Better get those balls checked out in this clinic, then. So cold! Like a stake through the heart! Hmm. What do they call you, anyway? Gober. Everyone calls me Gober. All right. I'm Kathy. Pleasure to meet you. So, what's your story, anyway? My story? Yeah. Don't all bums have a story? For your information, this is all just a dry streak in my showbiz career. Is that so? I don't recognize you at all. I used to have more hair. That, I actually believe. Come on, man! Frankie Gold is my stage name. Surely you must have heard of me? Not really, no. Oh, come on! I have starred in dozens of Hollywood movies. The Silence of the Lambert? Jacob's Bladder? <coughs> The usual surprises? Natural bald killers? Not ringing any bells. Kids these days, no appreciation for quality cinema. Breaks my heart. If we hadn't established that there are actual real-life movies in this fictional place, then I would assume that, you know, the, the game was just trying to play on various movie titles, but since things like, you know, Titanic and The Thing and Pulp Fiction exist, I have to imagine this guy just does, like, cheap parody films. Uh, either that or Goober's just messing with us, because he seems very jovial. Yeah, it could be too. So, tell me about this acting career of yours. What about it? <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> tell me about... The silence of Lambert. Lawrence Lambert, a real estate agent, suddenly turns mute overnight. For weeks, he tries to communicate with customers using a self-invented sign language, only to realize that true love needs no communication at all. He marries his housekeeper, who only knows two words in English, yes and clean. In the end, Lawrence dies of a heart attack in the arms of his lovely wife, Consuelo Lambert Vasquez. Based on a true story. Well... He spoiled it now. I'm not sure. Get the elevator pitch. Got ready to go. Bad, but I'm gonna ask anyway. Jacob's Bladder, the tragic story of Jacob Cobb, a schizophrenic man who forms an imaginary romantic relationship with his bladder. During long and joyful monologues on the can, he starts referring to his nether regions by the name of Jenny. Sadly, before Jacob has a chance to elope with his sweetheart, he gets committed to an asylum due to increasingly erratic behavior. 
After a big fight with his paramour, Jacob refuses to pee for a week, and he dies from a ruptured bladder. Give me the rundown on the usual surprises. A lighthearted comedy taking place during a surprise birthday party of a 34-year-old Sid McBacon. The story is told from eight different perspectives to keep the audience guessing who the protagonist actually is. The movie ends with the biggest surprise of them all. Sid suddenly dies of an epileptic seizure. I guess it's more of a dark <laughs> comedy. Natural bald killers? It's a dystopian vision of the future where people are valued by the quality of their hair. The protagonist, Eddie Zephyr, turns bald in high school. One day, he has simply had enough of all the teasing and the bullying and he completely snaps and heads out on a scalping spree in search of the perfect head of hair. Eddie makes his way to Mexico for an illegal hair transplant. However, he has an adverse reaction to the anesthesia and he dies on the operating table. Why do you always die at the end of your movies? Typecasting. <laughs> okay. Oh, never mind. Not the cultured type. I understand. I need to ask you a few questions. Sounds serious. Ask away. Do you know what happened to Joseph Rain in 81? I most certainly do. What? Tell me. Are you sure you want to know? Not everyone can handle the truth. Oh, just spit it out. Okay, here we go. Ready? Abducted by aliens. Aha! Uh, I should have known better. Oh, I saw it, man. A big, huge light. I was a bit drunk at the time, but I had my reasons. My wife had just left me, taking the dog, not to mention I was being conscripted for the war. But I'm telling you, those goddamn aliens took him and they experimented on him. And that's why he was so messed up when they put him back. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to stop you there. Open your mind, man. Do you know who Lily Myers was? Yep, my dad was the one who found her floating in the lake. Really? What can you tell me about her? Ah, geez, not a lot. I mean, teenage girls, man, they're like their own species. Impossible to figure out. Not to mention how that entire family ain't, like, people-friendly. Now that's an understatement. Nearly started brawling with Sue the first time I met her. <laughs> she could sure deal out a mean whoop in that lady. Do you recognize the nickname Cocky? Why, I used to call myself that back in Nam. Oh, how uh -huh. I miss that marvelous youthful ego of mine. Ah, <sighs> why do I even bother? Do you know who Charles Wade is? Sure, he's been holed up in this clinic for the last couple of weeks. You saw Charles Wade go in there? Well, yeah, I just told you, man. How did he look? Okay, I guess. Still walking, at least. What do you know about Lily Meyer's art? Nothing but hearsay. People say it was pretty deranged. What's your opinion on the Church of the Holy Trinity? I'd say they're good people. Isaac the priest is, anyway. His dad, Father Bill, on the other hand, though, he and the people he had around him were into some weird shit. What kind of weird shit? I don't know. Uh, they were like a cult or something, with Billy Praise himself at the top. Really shifty bunch of folks. Isaac turned it all around when his dad kicked the bucket, made it a proper church. Interesting. Do you know anyone else who was involved in the old church? Not really. I tried to stay as far away from those people as possible. Ask Isaac about it. He's a friendly guy. All right. I might do that. This guy is wildly unreliable. <laughs> like, there's some things he says that are just obviously batshit crazy, and other things that... You can kind of believe. Plausible. Yeah, plausible. Um, can we show him the photo? Do you know what this is? Chinese fireworks, of course. I grew up in Shanghai. I know what I'm talking about. They used to call me Dung Pai, meaning round-eyed baldy. Those were some rough years. I miss the food, not to mention the women. Got two kids down there now, Mei Lin and Little Ping. 
Time to hit the off switch now, buddy. Hmm. So if he doesn't recognize the lights, can we infer that he's full of shit when he talks about the aliens? Uh, possibly. Um, Do you recognize these men? That's your granddad, right? Yeah. What about the other two? No idea. I think my face blindness is acting up again. Okay. I don't need to show him that. How about the flower stuff? I don't need to show... Do you know anything about this flower? It's red? <laughs> Enlightening. Brilliant. I don't need to show him that. I don't need to show... I don't need to show... Well, I think we've gotten everything that we're going to get out of this guy. Wanna smoke, Seems buddy? like it. Nah, I got stage two lung cancer. I'm keeping it under control with a fruitarian diet. I could, but only if I had a really good reason. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Okay, that's enough serious questions for now. Alrighty. Can we dig in the trash? Okay, I'm off. Bye. We're going to find out. Yep. It's full of trash. Figure that. Oh, come on. Live a little. <laughs> now, not much to do here, but uh, head into the clinic. Excuse me, nurse. Hey, nurse. She's jamming. Yeah. They don't pay you much, huh? No shit. What do you want? I'm here to see Charles Wade. Never heard of him. Anything else? Bullshit. I know he's here. Listen, it's okay. I'm a friend of the family. No, you're not, and I said he's not here. Don't make me call security. I got a tape recorder <sighs> and everything. <laughs> What do we got around here? Plant ashtray, calendar, notice board, computer files, upstairs, chairs, magazines. All right. Check out this uh, plant. I was expecting plastic, but this looks like a real plant. Are we going to use uh, Goober as a distraction again? Healthcare regulations. Oh, probably. A calendar from 1991. Hmm, guess they really liked that year. I can't read it from here. I can't read it from here. <laughs> Kathy, do you need eyeglasses? I can't read it from here. <laughs> All right, fine. A computer. They likely keep records of their patients on it. Rows and columns of files. Probably easier to use the computer if I need to do some digging. No, thanks. I have better things to do. Uncomfortable, hard plastic chairs. It's like they're intentionally trying to keep people out. I presume that we can't just walk by. No point. I wouldn't even know what room to go to. <laughs> so we could. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we need to mess with the files or bulletin board to figure out where Charles is. Yeah. Doofus. Oh, hi! So, how good an actor are you? The best! The very best! You know, that nurse in there, she said she loved you in all those movies. And that she always wished you'd give her a live performance. I knew it! She always gave me these strange looks. I thought it was contempt, but her face must just be crapping up from shyness. <laughs> Yeah, that's definitely it. She'd love to see you act, I'm sure. I'm sorry, I love this guy. To <laughs> Which movie do you think she'd like the best? Hmm. Uh, I would say Jacob's Bladder is going to be the most out there. Seems to be, yeah. Definitely Jacob's Bladder. I'm feeling the pressure.
Now the question here, is the adventure game sociopathy going to spike and we're going to uh, tase our pal Goober? Oh, Jenny, everything is forgiven. You and me were like peas and carrots. A computer. They likely keep records of their patients on it. Love that I think I'm about to burst. Jenny, where did you go? Oh, I don't feel so good. Good idea, but Thank it wouldn't match his you. symptoms. Ah. I see. That wasn't really an electrifying performance. Up We're way ahead of you, Kathy. Mm-hmm. All right, which one of these? Hey, doofus. Oh, hi. Hey. Sure. Which one of these was it? One of them mentioned a Caesar, didn't they? Yeah, the usual, How about uh, the surprises. usual surprises. Business as usual. I can't believe you guys did all this for me. You know, I, uh, what's this smell? Bacon? Oh, Bobby, my head hurts. I'm seizing. Nurse, he's seizing. Oh, shit. Man, I feel like a total jackass. I'll have to make it up to the poor guy later. Another seven bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. We're just going to give him the three to make him whole at ten. Oh, no. Are we going to have to tase him repeatedly? Like, it's the same as the coffee puzzle? Clyde. <laughs> oh, this one's only got four megabytes of memory. Hmm. Extract the admin password. Crap. Looks like I have to figure out the username some other way. Otor Gotter? Gator? Otor Gotter. I guess check the bulletin board for, um... Employee of the month, Carlita Mendez. <laughs> what a joke. It's that obnoxious nurse. Okay. Incredible. Uh, let's find Mr. Wade. Gotcha. Charles Wade, date of birth, 8 14 24. Uh, 8 24 Referral from Dr. A. Friedman, St. Francis Medical Center, Kansas City. Uh, so, of note, he's been in the hospital for about a month now. Patient has undergone successful invasive heart surgery and was transferred to this facility at his own request. The initial prognosis looks good, and the patient is likely to make a full recovery in six to eight weeks. Room 6B, condition stable. Brilliant. Rows and columns of files. Hope you've got medical insurance, Goober. It's all right, Claude. Understood, sir. So, you managed to find me. I did. Well, let's get this over with then. How do you want your pictures? Shall I get some tubes to fill my face with? Will that suffice for your front page? I'm no journalist. Well, not yet anyway. Ah, she's but a cub. So, you're hoping for your big break. 
Surely this must be worth an internship at one of the big papers. Do you want me to call Thompson at the Times and get it over with? I still play golf with him every once in a while. That's not what this is about. It's personal. Sounds serious. Perhaps I should ask Claude to produce his gun. You know, Charles, the person most likely to be harmed by a gun tends to be its owner. Very true. That's something the Japs who captured me learned the hard way. Did my grandfather bail you out then too, or was that one of the few times where he didn't save your sorry ass? Hold on there. Explain yourself. You're willing to listen to something other than your own voice? I'm stunned. <sighs> I'm Kathy Rain. Joseph was my grandfather. Now I remember. You were at the funeral. I was. You were late. I needed my morning smoke. Besides, it's not like Grandpa was going anywhere. <laughs> oh, just look at her, Claude. She's absolutely fearless. That's Joseph's blood running through her veins. She certainly has a smart mouth, sir. I must say, you have me intrigued, Kathy. What can this old man help you with? All Tell right. me about Cocky. Do you recognize the call sign, Cocky? Would be strange if I didn't, since I was the one who coined it. It belongs to a fellow named Jimmy Cochran. He was a coward, really. The nickname is somewhat of a bad joke. Perfect. Thanks. Tell me about Jimmy Cochran. Is he still alive? Mm -hmm. In a literal sense. He's been held in a mental institution for years. Let me guess. Since 81? Either 82 or 83. I'm fairly certain it was early 83. Do you remember the name of the institution? Something starting with an E. Uh, Emerson, Everton, or similar. Ingstrom? Ingstrom Psychiatric Hospital? Yes, that's the one. You know the place, Kathy. Unfortunately. I do. My mother is in there. Sharon Evans? I had her committed about a year ago. I see. It must have taken a lot of courage to do that, Kathy. Mothers have a lot of power over us. More than most of us care to admit. I guess so. Do you know why Jimmy ended up in there? Some obsessive compulsive syndrome. He became fixated with circles and started hurting himself trying to scratch the circles out of his head. Creepy. I wonder what set him off. I think I'll check the place out tomorrow. Too late to head back to the city now. Do you know anything about what happened to my grandfather in 81? I wish I did, Kathy. You must know I did everything in my power to help. How do you think Mary Elizabeth could afford all that expensive treatment? MRIs, neurologists, say what you will about Joseph. But he was never rich. Strange. Grandma never mentioned that to me. She's just too proud. At first she refused. She was convinced that I had an agenda, that there were strings attached. And were there? Don't be silly. Despite all that had happened, I still loved Joseph dearly. I wanted to help. People from places like this have a deeply rooted mistrust in the rich, passed on for generations. In her eyes, I had become one of them. So that's all you know about the whole affair? Are you implying that there's more to know? I left the diagnosis to the professionals. Mrs. Rain accepted the health care, but asked me to stay out of everything else. So I did. I see. What can you tell me about your friendship with Grandpa? Joseph was the best friend I ever had. We grew up together. Married our high school sweethearts together. Went to war together. I can't even begin to count the number of times he's saved my life. I repaid the favor once or twice. But he came up ahead, no doubt. So, when did you two lose touch? I heard that something happened between you and him. What was it? 
The truth is, Brian Rain happened. Sharon Evans happened. My parents? Yes. They ruined everything with their vile, destructive behavior. I couldn't have that around my daughter or my newborn grandson. Joseph was naive. He believed that anyone could be helped, that anyone could be reasoned with, given a chance. He was just... too good, bless him. He should have been harder on Brian, more strict. It's hardly Grandpa's fault. He did everything he could to set my father straight. Oh, I never claim to doubt Joseph's commitment. But I'm not going to ignore his flaws, either. Your grandfather often used his heart when he should have used his head. You say that like it's a bad thing. I believe it is, objectively. But I shouldn't speak ill of the dead. Eventually, my company grew much too large for this little town, and we moved on. Not long after that, your grandfather ended up in that wheelchair. That marked the end of our friendship, for obvious reasons. Obvious reasons. Hmm. You bought a number of paintings by Lily Myers. Why? I'm known to dabble in art from time to time. Martha, my wife at the time, was enamored with the paintings. I believe she first saw them at the high school which the Myers girl attended. Anyway, after the poor girl killed herself, I bought the painting speculatively. When a young artist with any talent to speak of commits suicide, it can be a wet dream of certain connoisseurs. Shortly after procuring the art, I had it valued by an expert who determined that the value was three times the amount I bought it for. Today, I'm sure I would have made my money back tenfold or more if it wasn't for the art theft. What art theft? There was a burglary at the mansion I used to own here in town. It was all over the local news at the time. Well, shit. Eloquently put. Can you tell me about the art theft? Well, somebody broke in, stole the paintings, and got out. Fairly clumsy job. Lots of broken windows. The strangest thing was, was that I had a Monet, a Rembrandt, and two paintings by Picasso, untouched. But every single painting by an unknown local artist, gone. That can't be a coincidence. Agreed. Somebody wanted those paintings badly. I assume there was an investigation. Yes. Sheriff Truman came by with his deputy a few hours later, but they didn't have much luck. We found a few hairs, which turned out to be from Raffles, the family dog. Some stunning police work right there. Indeed. There was a single witness, though, who said he could make out multiple burglars leaving the scene of the crime, but nothing more than that. So, I take it the case was closed? Yes. I honestly didn't care much one way or the other given the fact that my most expensive pieces were safe and sound. I think I'll have a chat with the sheriff about the matter, if that's okay with you. Certainly. I'll call ahead and instruct him to give you everything you need. Oh, handy. That'd be great. Thanks, Charles. Anytime. But I'm curious. What's your interest in the paintings? I've learned that my grandfather went to Sue and asked to see them, right before he had his... injury. Is that so? Strange. What can you tell me about the Church of the Holy Trinity? They seem like any other church to me. But then again, I'm not their usual clientele. Weddings, baptisms, and funerals are just about what I can muster. And I always leave early. What do you see in this picture, Charles? Fireflies would be my best guess. They can grow terribly large. <laughs> Very big. <laughs> I don't need to show him that. What do you I think about floppy disks? I don't need to show him that. Flowers? I show him. Do you know what this is? A flower. Why don't you consult a botanist instead of bothering me with this nonsense? 
Uh, does he know about the lighter? Charles? Of course. Your grandfather, me, Jimmy Cochran, taken shortly before we went to the war. You guys look like you just won the lottery or something. Indeed. We were mere children, with no concept of what we were getting into. I don't need to show him that. I don't need to show him that. He's being cooperative at the moment. <laughs> I shouldn't push my luck. I don't need to sh All right, well. Okay. I don't need to show him. You want to see what I did with the dictaphone? I impersonated you. <laughs> I kind of wanted to play it for him. <laughs> Thanks, Charles. That's all I need for now. You're welcome, Kathy. Come back anytime. That guy is huge. I wonder how many cows he eats per day. The guy's huge, and he's got huge guts. What manga do you think he's reading? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Looks like Wade brought It's got to be FMA, right? <laughs> In 95? Please, mm. come on now. Even I know better than that. Wasn't that like early oh. 2000s? All right, fine. It's Rama one half. Yeah, now see, there's a name that I don't know anything about, so I can't call you on your bullshit. <laughs> Just some boring landscape paintings. Just some boring landscape paintings. A private phone. Wade must get special privileges here. A private phone. Can I ask him I for his phone number? Time. No. I don't suppose so. Don't be ridiculous. Right. Thanks, Charles. That's all I need for now. You're welcome, Kathy. Come back anytime. Well, that gets us some fresh hot lore. Piping hot lore yeah. delivered right onto our plates. What I'm curious about is... Can I still visit the cabin? I can. I want to show that drawing to Nathan. Yeah, I definitely think that Nathan is the one who drew it. And we're probably going to get a cryptic clue from him. Oh, it's you again. Come on in. You got any cigs? Oh, Nathan's not here. No Nathan today? Nah, haven't seen Nate all day. Probably out in the woods. Hmm. Mm hmm. Looks like Nathan knows the strange red man. I need to talk to him about this. That must be Lily. She seems very happy looking up at the red man. Is this how Nathan still sees himself? As a little boy? A bald man dressed in red. Oh, creepy. I had a, a few more questions, Sue. She. Do you know who the red man is? Oh, that's just Nate's imaginary friend. The red man has been around ever since my boy was little. I see. So there's no actual person in town he could be referring to? <laughs> no way! According to Nathan, the red man hasn't changed in 30 years. The red man actually exists. I met him in the forest. What? That's crazy talk. Stop kidding around. I am not in the mood. I don't need to ask her about that. <laughs> Did you know that somebody stole Lily's paintings from Wade? Huh? I knew he got robbed a few years back, but I, I thought he still had them all. Hmm. I think I'm gonna head off now. Sure thing, little cat. Come back anytime.
Hmm. Thick, dense forest. Is the seagull a hot spot? <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> you know, you want some cigarettes? Oh. I don't think we've asked her about the flower, have we? I think we missed our opportunity, so let's let's go ahead and do that real quick. I had a, a few more. Shoot. Do you know anything about this flower? Sure. Smoked it a few times back in the day, before it was endangered and all. Yeah? What was it like? Similar to pot, but stronger and more unpredictable. Never touched this stuff after I got pregnant with Lily. All right. Sue, what do you see in this picture? My god, that looks like one of Lily's paintings. Wow, really? Can you describe it? It was a nighttime scene, just like the photo, but the lights were floating above the lake. There was a pale hand reaching up from beneath the surface trying to touch them. The forest in the background was on fire, making the sky purple and red. There were probably other details too, but... That's what I can remember. Sounds captivating. Wish I could have seen it. Hmm. No reason. Well? I think I'm gonna head off. Sure thing. Lady, it sounds like you got a Nyarlathotep or something in the lake there. <laughs> that was definitely worth going back in for. Mm-hmm. The lake does seem like it's going to be a set pace sooner or later. Well, now that we know that it has pot-like properties, are we going to be able to obtain it? Looks like a specimen of the red scythe. It's endangered. I'm not going to take it without a really good reason. Oh, I do enjoy burning things. Just not that. Nah, I. No luck, man. Not sure what. Makes me wonder if we're gonna have to roll it into a cigarette at some point. Maybe. They keep talking about smoking it. Well, let's pop over to the church and see what they have to say. Well, we took your advice Hello, and father. finally showed up. Greetings, my child. I'm glad you decided to come here. Yeah, but just so you know, I'm not here to join your church or anything. Oh, I would never assume that. Good. So, with that out of the way, I have some questions. Anything you need. I'm Isaac Price. Price. Kathy. Kathy Rain, but I'm guessing you figured that out already. I did. Rumors spread quickly around here. So how can I be of service? You got anything, like, really useful in your family crypt? <laughs> like, any leads in there? Yeah, Price is the name on that mausoleum. Do you know anything about what happened to my grandfather in 81? It was the work of the devil, I'll say that much. Joseph was a kind man. He did not deserve such a fate. You heard my speech at the funeral, Kathy. I meant every word. He was a great man who did much good for this community. Did you know him personally? In a way, he and my father did charity work together. Joseph was around a lot when I was young. They collaborated on a few different projects for the homeless and for the troubled youth, among other things. So my grandfather was a member of the church? I wouldn't say that, no. He was a friend of the church, but he wasn't a religious man. He believed only in philanthropy. That being said, Joseph was the person who convinced me to become a priest. Really? Oh, yes. I was a teenager back then. Full of rebellion. Every fiber of my being wanting to distance myself from my father. Joseph made me realize my sinful pride and showed me how I should follow my heart, regardless of what others might think. 
and for that, I'm eternally grateful. Does the name Lily Myers mean anything to you? It does. Before I was ordained, I was a substitute teacher in her high school. Really? Did you know her personally? We weren't close. I only knew her as much as a teacher would know any student. All right, so how did she seem toward the end? For one, she started skipping school a lot. And when she did show up, she was absent-minded and moody. She always looked depressed and hunched down like she had the whole world on her shoulders. Any idea of what caused this change? Not a clue. All I know is, when she returned from that last summer break, she was a whole different person. Do you know who Jimmy Cochran is? I don't recognize that name, no. Do you know anything about an art theft at the Wade Estate in the 80s? I have just a vague memory of reading about it in the paper. Care to tell me the history of the church? I'd be happy to. The story is a fascinating one. I doubt that. This church was founded by my father, William T. Price, in the 70s. Back then, he made his living as a traveling salesman and was driving through this area as he had done so, so many times before. However, this day was different. My father held dark thoughts in his mind. He was angry, thinking of evil deeds, even considering swerving off the road into a rock and ending it all. Then suddenly, divine intervention. Three bright lights appeared. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The sign of God. This epiphany was the moment my father had been waiting for. He sold all of his belongings and took me and my brother to live with him here in Conwell Springs. Soon thereafter, he built this church and started gathering followers. They began to refer to him as Father Bill. I take it that window up there resembles what he saw when he had this epiphany? Indeed. The stained glass window depicts the Holy Trinity as witnessed by my father. Do you know exactly when or where this event took place? Why do you ask? Oh, just curious. It's a captivating story. Well, it was the spring of 1971, but my father never told anyone where. Okay, so what happened then? People flocked to Father Bill. He started teaching, writing scripture, the church flourished and continued to grow all the way up until his sudden death in 1983. That's when I stepped in to take leadership of the church. I take it that the church started declining after the death of Father Bill? Uh, yes, naturally so. With such a magnetic personality, he was irreplaceable. But I assure you, the church is still very much thriving. Looks kind of empty to me. It's not really our peak hours. What's up with you handing out pamphlets at funerals, then? Trying to reel people in at a weak moment? I'm going to assume you meant no disrespect, child. I'm simply providing divine guidance when it's needed the most. This may sound strange, but have you heard of or seen a strange man dressed in red? Only our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Surely his rags were drenched in blood as he lay upon the cross. <laughs> not what I meant. <laughs> That's not what I meant. Uh, I mean someone here, in Conwell Springs. Are you joking? I haven't seen a person like that, no. Here's I a photo. Could, but I think I have more to gain from a subtle strategy. I'll keep it to myself for now, until I know more about this church. I don't need to show him that. Father, do you know anything about this flower? Uh, no, my child. N nothing at all. Mm-hmm. Likely story. I don't need to sh I don't need to sh Father, have you installed Windows 95? I don't need to sh Do you recognize the man in this picture, Isaac? Only your grandfather. And that's just because I was given a similar picture at the service the other day. 
Part of mm. me was wondering if the lighter, uh, the B was for Bill, but no, um, uh, price does not, it does not look like an H. Yeah. That's all I need for now, Father. May the Lord shine his light on you. Now, beyond Isaac being dodgy about uh, the flower, I feel like he's pretty much on the level with us. Yeah, the flower was the only thing that struck me as particularly odd. The fact that he distanced himself from Bill suggests to me that he's not really continuing whatever um, Bill was up to. Yeah, and the existence of this symbol because his father saw the same thing that um, that Joseph Rain saw. I mean, that that could just imply a coincidence that, you know, he was affected by this thing and so he just interpreted it as something religious. Um, but that's very naive to think that this isn't involved in the core mystery somehow. Yeah, it, it seems like that whatever Bill was up to, what he was being under the influence of uh, the, the Cthulhu's they got uh, with Mr. Redman. Yeah. Impressive window. There's no doubt about it. Those are the smoky lights. Free Bibles. I really shouldn't. They might burn. It's an altar. You know, the place where they put the sacrificed goats, kids, and other crap. What's behind doors number one and two? Locked. This isn't going to be worth the wait. Locked. Nope. <laughs> Isaac, you got a key for these? <laughs> Hello, Isaac. I'm old. That's all I need. Alright, well, I don't think we're going to get anything more out of him. Not yet, anyway. We have one last lead to check out. Based on what Wade told us. Hello, Sheriff. Mind if I ask you a few more questions? If you must. Do you know who Jimmy Cochran is? Nope. Do you know anything about a weird bald guy dressed in red around here? What the hell are you talking about? Never mind. Do you know anything about the art theft in the Wade estate? Um, yes. Mr. Wade phoned ahead about that. Lenny! Yes, boss? Get the report from the burglary in the Wade estate back in 86? On it, boss. We could have got it ourselves. You don't have to go to the trouble. <laughs> March 11, 86, 1 12 a.m. The alarm in the way to state is triggered. The house is empty at the time, and the neighbors contact law enforcement. March 11, 86, 2 04 a.m. Officers arrive at the scene. Several broken windows can be observed. A sweep of the estate and surrounding premises reveals no trace of the perpetrators. March 12, 86, 2 20 a.m. A single witness identified as Franklin Goldfarb. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> identified as Franklin Goldfarb reports seeing multiple burglars leaving the scene of the crime. April 12th, 86, 12.15 p.m. Charles Wade arrives in Conwell Springs to make an official statement. After examining the house, he reports that paintings with an excess value of $15,000 have been stolen. April 26th, 86, 2 o'clock p.m. The art in question has not yet popped up in any circles that are known to deal with stolen goods, terminating investigation due to lack of leads. So is this telling me that Goober Goldfarb guy? Maybe he knows more about the burglary. 
Time to ask everybody we know about Mr. Goldfarb. <sighs> hey, Lenny. Hello, Kathy. <laughs> What's up? Do you know who Jimmy Cochran is? Not really, Kathy. Sorry. Nah, I don't want to ask him about that. Good. Do you know anything about a weird bald guy dressed in red around here? You're joking, right? Oh, never mind. What's so weird about a weird red guy? Come on. Does the name Franklin Goldfarb mean anything to you? Sounds familiar, but I can't place him. Well, gotta go. See ya. Is it even worth asking the sheriff? <laughs> I mean, he just got here, so. Hello, sheriff. My... <sighs> Does the name Franklin Goldfarb mean anything to you? Never heard of him. Anything else? That's all for now. Good. Uh, we can always go check Grandma's handy dandy phone book. <laughs> I don't have a reason to go in there right now. Lanny, I need you to do something. How can I help us? Hmm. Franklin Goldfarb. It sounds totally made up, and I'm pretty confident it's going to be Goober. <laughs> hmm. No Goldfarb in here. Maybe he moved? I should ask around and see if anyone knows him. How about Cochran? Nah, nothing like that in here. No result. Nah, nothing like Oh, he's right here. The red man just says it right there. <laughs> yeah, it says Edmund Redman. <laughs> oh, hello. I gotta ask you some questions, Grandma. What do you know about the red man? There are a few things very well. I don't see a reason to ask her about that. Why not? Do you know who Jimmy Cochran is? He was a friend of Grandpa's. I believe he teaches at the flight school these days. I don't think so, at least not anymore. I was told he was placed in a mental facility. Really? He always struck me as a kind man. Maybe a bit nervous and on edge, but not crazy. There's more. I found out that Jimmy asked Grandpa for help not long before Grandpa ended up in that wheelchair. Jimmy sounded really desperate. I'm sure what happened to Grandpa that night had something to do with his cry for help. You should go find the man, then. Surely he must know something. That's the plan. I just wondered if there's anything else you think I should know about him. Not really. We haven't stayed in touch since Joseph was injured. I know that he had a wife, Agatha, and a son, James. Agatha passed away from cancer years ago, but as far as I know, James still lives in the city with his family. Okay, thanks, Grandma. Well, time to hack up the uh, the message and use it to trick James into <laughs> thinking that <laughs> he probably wants to talk to us. I don't see a reason to ask her about that. Does the name Franklin Goldfarb mean anything to you? Oh, that poor man. He used to be an upstanding citizen, you know. Now he's constantly drinking, mm -hmm. just babbling on about that imaginary <laughs> acting career of his. Sad thing. Do you know where I can find him? <laughs> Don't you? <laughs> Homeless, dear. Lost his job a few years ago and never really got back on his feet. Okay, now I know who you're talking about. Thanks, Grandma. <laughs> Looks like I'm going to have to have a chat with Goober. Hope he's not going to hold a grudge against the whole uh, being tased thing. I don't want to. Sh See you later, Grams. Take care. Well, let's look this up in the phone book and see if we can get some information <laughs> on. Uh... Oh, no, it's not even going to let us. No, nope. I thought maybe also, we could... like, hmm? like at least with like, uh, Cochran's family, like I, I, like we probably should have, but we never got the verb for it. And also, I, I feel like that when we do get to talk to Jimmy, probably tomorrow when we go to the mental institution, um, his, his testimony is going to be very wild and out there. Like my prediction is that um, 
Goober's delusions are also a product of the light, much how like uh, Kathy's mom is uh, having some psychosis uh, and Bill was kind of out there. So but th- that's what I think is going on. Well, I guess we can always ask him next week as saving often returns for Kathy Rain Part 4, The Search for Goober. <laughs> There's been a lot We're of info dumped at us here in this episode. Um, unfortunately, light on puzzles, but but we know a lot of background information now, and we can kind of start to piece together some of the moving parts of this mystery. Uh, we know that there's a Cthulhu. Um, we, uh, you know, know that Goober is essential to the story. Um, and, you know, the, the pace of this has gotten been very brisk. Um, we've been able to, you know, very rapidly encounter a lot of information uh, and uh, in very little puzzles, but, you know, that's okay. So no, sometimes, like, it's just you can just have, like, an NPC talk at you and tell you that, you know, you're, you're good at figuring this out. Yeah, I mean, as long as we're making some progress in some meaningful way, I'm happy. But uh, I do hope that we get to use our brains a little bit more in the next part. But uh, who knows? Maybe the next thing will just be a gauntlet of puzzles. Maybe it'll just be like five puzzle boxes that Kathy Rain has to figure out in order to get the address of the mental facility or something. We'll find out, I guess. I guess we will. Um, You know... I'm going <laughs> to... This keeps happening, This Rick. keeps happening. It, the, you know, when the game moves in, in such a such a smooth pace as this has, you, you, you forget to save. You forget to save. But, you know, credit to Kathy Rain for never making me feel like I have to save. Um, you know, never in any kind of danger. I wonder if this is also going to take a, a play from the uh, Gabriel Knight playbook and maybe put me in danger later on in the game. Um... I guess we'll see, but I'm excited to find out more. What about you? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm excited to, you know, uh, rob the credentials of another uh, old CRT computer. Um. <laughs> I hope we just get to keep using that boot disk. I will be very sad when we wake up one day and the boot disk is gone. It, it'll be tragic. The Redman will be laughing at us. Yes, he will. All right. You all take care of yourselves. Save early, save often. Please come back next week. And uh, if you see any red men out there, they're figments of your imagination. See ya.